Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Key Codes Live. Amazing. So my first time, first time going live. Uh, so I need to get adjusted to this. It's a little bit out of my comfort zone, but yes, uh, let's do it. So if you like programming or are interested in computer related stuff and you are not already subscribed, consider subscribing to this channel. This is my very first live stream and this live stream is actually supported by Kite. Kite is your AI, AI based programming co-pilot. It helps you with AI based code completions. So let me just share my screen because they are actually uh, gave me the pro license of their software for free. So I figured it would be nice to give them a little, a little shout out. Um, so <laughs> how does this work here? Share screen. Yes. This one. There we go. Amazing. Ha, perfect. So what 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 was I going to say? Um so Kite is your AI-based programming copilot copilot. So it seamlessly integrates into your uh, editors and it has co uh, copilot functionality for over. Let me just turn off the Discord here. There we go. See my first live stream. I need to be better prepared next time. Anyway, 16 different programming languages, 16 different editors. It integrates and it helps you to actually write better, more stable, more uh, flawless code. And what you see on the on the right side here is actually the copilot. And I hope we will see it later when we will go on and do some programming. Hello, Chris. Hello, Daniel. Nice to see you. Perfect. Um, I actually have the chat and a couple of notes on this side. So if I look over here, it's because I need to get a little glimpse on my notes and I want to see if somebody is working on, uh, is writing something in the chat. Anyway, um, what are we going to do today? The, the topic of today's live stream, not today's video, is to explore easy GA. Um, Daniel, the one of the guys currently pretty active in the chat, thank you for that, uh, sent me his Python package that he developed with a couple of fellow coders and asked me for some feedback. And that's what we're going to do today. We will look at EasyGA and yes, yeah, see how it works, what we can do with it. And we will also go and look under the hood and maybe do some code reviews. And I don't know, maybe everything is cool or maybe we have some um, advice or constructive criticism um, to offer to make this an even even better package. I haven't looked at it that much, to be honest. I just went on their GitHub page and saw that they uh, put some some big effort into compiling some information on how to get started with genetic algorithms and. So I thought this framework might be worth checking out. But because I want to keep this live, I want to keep this raw, I um, stopped myself and didn't look any further so far so that we can explore this together. Just see. Amat, thank you for joining the live stream. How are you doing? Um, does 
does it help with Kara stuff? Chris asks. So let me check this one out here. Oh, that's nice. So I, I, I think he, I think Chris is referring to Kite. Um, yes, it actually does. Um, we won't go into Keras and TensorFlow today, but it actually has this co-pilot. And what it does is it follows your your cursor and your code and will give you the um, the documentation for all of the commands you are using right next to your programming environment, your IDE, and therefore helps you to more fluently write uh, in some frameworks you haven't tried out before. And it also shows you like, so I was just um, starting and messing around a little bit. I, I, I created a little Python environment for us to work in today. And I just wrote a little print statement and it gave me all of the um, possible parameters you can hand over to print of which I of which some of them, some of them I have never used. Like for instance, uh, I didn't know that there is actually a parameter to flush the print statement immediately. So that's pretty cool. So you always find new little um, command lab, sorry, commando command parameters uh, that you can use um, by using Kite as your copilot. Anyway, um, let's. Well done. This is, by the way, StreamYard. It's, it says on the top, uh, top right of the of the of the stream. It's not sponsored or any way. I just found out about it, and I really love the company. If you want to check out Kite, by the way, there is a link in the description below. It's an affiliate link. So if you want to support this channel and install Kite for yourself, it's free. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do without the, with, without the pro license. Um, you can go in the description below and you will find a link there. All righty. There's actually a question about genetic algorithms already. Um, let me just, just read the name. I hopefully don't screw it up. So, um, Zain Lebedin asks, could you please, please explain to us the importance of elitisms in genetic algorithm? So what you basically have is every time you run a new generation in your genetic algorithm, you are, if you don't have elitism in your genetic algorithms, you basically just choosing the two parents from the for, former generation in your in your uh, genetic algorithms and you recombine their genome to generate new offsprings. So you are never guaranteed to actually keep the best um, solutions from your last generation, which means in the end, if you have a really good solution in, let's say, generation 10, you would lose that if you don't have elitism switched on because all of the new offsprings would just be randomly generated based on good solutions from the last generations but are not actually the best solutions in the last generations. So elitism basically says you are just copying your top solutions like top, top two, top three solutions from your last generations and you put them at the at the very start of your new generation, so you keep the best solutions and don't lose them through random recombinations. I hope that makes sense. All righty, easy GA. So what I like to do first is to go over um, their GitHub repository and have a look and see um, how they actually try to convince me to use their framework because there are some frameworks um, helping with genetic algorithms already. And yeah, let's let's dive into it. Uh, so this is their GitHub page. Um, and 
Daniel is actually in the chat as well. So if you have any questions um, whatsoever related to the to the project, why he is doing it, and whatsoever, just put in the chat, and I, I guess he is more than happy to answer. Um, and I will do that as well. I will ask my my questions because, like I said, I never looked at it before, and maybe I get stuck. See, so here we go with some inside information. I just put that on the screen for the moment and go on with my analysis of the GitHub page. Um, EasyGA is a Python package designed to provide an easy to use genetic algorithm. The package is designed to work right out, out of the box while also allowing the user to customize features as they see fit. Okay, second production version. Somebody was was quite busy the last couple of hours, so they just released a new version of their package. Maybe they try to fix some more issues before I have a look at it. No, I don't think so. Um, but it's good. So they are actually actively developing it. That's something I look for if I if I, if I try to evaluate a package that I want to use for my software projects. I always see if the, if, they, if the community behind the project is still active. Otherwise, you maybe, maybe bet on a dead horse. Um, six contributors, that's a good number, I guess. So it's, 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 it's a small team, but they are just starting out. So if, I think if this project will get more traction, the team will increase. So if you if you look at other GitHub pages, for instance, like TensorFlows or um, Keras, Keras is a good example. You will see that the the, the team size actually grew um, over the over the time, and the core team um, was pretty. The core team that was was starting the the project actually in in, in Keras, it was just one person, and in, in the beginning is mostly pretty small. Installation. I did this already and it worked. So good. <laughs> so I, I actually have a running um, EasyGA installation in my Python environment. And we have a little bit of code here. So we have to import the package. That's cool. So it's it seems to be object oriented. So if you have watched my other videos on genetic algorithms, if you don't, <laughs> you should. Um, you see that I um, mostly wrote my code in a functional matter. Mm, that's maybe a little bit of my fancy little, I don't know. Um, I'm a really big fan of functional programming languages like Haskell. And um, I try to use as many functional concepts as possible in my code because I found that it reduces the number of errors I can introduce uh, in my into my code tremendously. So object orientation is valid. It's a good way to go. So no no criticism here, but I just want to to make a little distinction here and maybe a little point that I haven't made in one of my videos before because um, I like to go the functional route because you don't have to manage as much side effects as you might have with object-oriented programming. So let's see if we find something here. All righty, let's, let's go on. So. Um, we have a genetic algorithms. We just say genetic algorithm evolve, and then it starts going on. Um, I don't see how. So there must be a lot of stuff must be um, pre-initialized here. Otherwise, I don't see how we can just <laughs> instantiate an object and just run a genetic algorithm just by running evolve and actually have this going on here. I, Maybe just maybe just try this out for a moment. I just bring up my PyCharm. Here we go. I have so this is my PyCharm I use. 
um, I have here a, a virtual environment where I can install my pip packages without polluting my global pip package space. And I see somewhere here there must be an easy GA. Uh, there we go, easy GA. So this is this is the package we are going to explore today. And so everything is installed. So, so getting this out of the way, putting this in here. And oh, oh, configuration. Let's add a little Python configuration here. Python. And yes, that's the one. I call this Python, Python, Python. And let's see. What happens? Nothing. Ah. On the side, you see the um, Kite Copilot actually extracting um, members from the module and showing them here just randomly so if you so that you can basically explore the package while you're using it so it, it seems that nothing is really happening but maybe i do something quite wrong defaults for the win yes i i think so too Maybe, ah, come on. you see there's all, also um, in-code documentation, I like that. But what I don't really understand right now, why is nothing happening? Is my Python environment broken or is it easy GA? Why is nothing printed? Let's try again. Nothing. So I would have expected that I would see this output here, but I don't. But maybe my Python environment is broken. Yeah, it's, it's actually, let's, let's look at the activity monitor here something happening mm, not so much to be honest huh already um before i say that this initial example maybe is it is broken I, I before i say that let's let's try it again and use um, this one here, and let's start our. Let's get a Python in command line and just do it manually. Import EasyGA. That worked. So then now we create ourselves an EasyGA object. There we go. That seems to work. What's next? GA evolve. There we go. Nothing. GA dot print. Maybe it, it just evolved. Generation. Correct. So now I would expect to see. Ah, see, that there, there works. So it is my Python environment in PyCharm. Perfect. So we got this out of the way, and I have to fix my Python environment because there is a little red X that I was wondering about. Let's have a look at this in a second. So yeah, so it works. Uh, it's my it's Python three. No, don't worry. Uh, I only I only use um, I only use Python three. I hope so. Maybe I did did it wrong here. No, it's three point nine. 
Run configuration and please specify the script name. Ah, oh, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Ladies and gentlemen, officially screwed up the first time on the live stream. Maybe we do it like this. Right click here and run main. Ladies and gentlemen, this works. Perfect. <laughs> All righty, so after we got this out of the way, I would say we have a look at their wiki page in order to get some understanding how one is supposed to work with their framework. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I was ignoring the I was ignoring the engine warning light. Shame on me. There we go. Next. Um, we go back. Check out our wiki for more information. So, getting started guide. Got, I got that. Pip installing worked. Importing EasyGA worked. And EasyGA example is the one, the one that I did. Yes, it worked practically instantly if you do it right. So, all righty. Let's see. Yes, I can do that. Thank, thank you for letting me know. I can make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Thank you, Benny. So basic setup. Here you can learn all about, about all the different ways you can change basic setup configurations of EasyGA. So we already figured that there is a default configuration in place, otherwise we wouldn't be able to just run a genetic algorithms without actually specifying a problem here. We got, okay, you got two, got a chromosome length and we got a population size, got that. We got a generation goal, so we can specify how many generations we want to run the genetic algorithms. That's, I got that as well. So Schnarch, um, sorry, before we before we um, move on, let's let's have a look. There we go. Maybe here I can. Is it, maybe that's too small as well, right? Mm. It's too small. I can, but I can go into enter presentation mode. No, I don't have my Kite Copilot. Anyway. So we put this in. Um, code styling. And we need to have a new line here. And I have to get out of this. Exit full screen mode. Thank you. So this is better. Um, code, run, run main. Let's see. All right. Okay, what do we see now? So we should have, we have a chromosome length of five. Yes, we do have that. Fitness. What's the difference between Five 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 eight five five is fitness nine. Okay, I think it is. It's trying to get all all fives fives. For some reason, the best fitness is the chromosome with all fives. 
Okay. Why not? Generation goal. Interestingly, okay, we have. Uh, let me just just go back here. Before the evolve. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you very much, Daniel. Here we go. If I set the parameters for a genetic algorithm, I should call it before the actual run of the genetic algorithms. There we go. And let's do it again. So here we go, current generation. So that's, that's actually pretty good. So we have the generation goal, which is the generation limit. How many generations are we running this for? We have the population size. We have exactly five different specimen specimen here, each with a chromosome. And now we have a chromosome, chromosome length of, yet now we have it of 10. And we have fitness for, all right, I got that. Uh, anyway, next. Um, Let's go back to the tutorial and so is that actually the next step? Yes, it is. Gene and chromosomes. Chromosomes. Okay, gene implementation or chromosome implementation. Gene implementation is used if you want to set all the genes to the same range with one function. Oh, that's good. So here we go with functional programming a little bit. So we can parameterize our genome object by overriding some of its basic implementations. And we get a lambda. And basically, we say that the gene is, we just see, so a gene is one item in a, in a chromosome. So you get basically a set of three different colors, red, blue, orange, or green. Yeah, got that. So what is going on here? We are creating a gene and we set we randomly choose genes from a range from 1 to 10 yes i think so and the chromosome length is 5 so yes okay i got that that's pretty self explanatory i like that i like that you can just put in new functions here. That's a good way of parameterizing this. Um, I don't think that I have to try this. Fitness is none. Using the random info the standard library, EZGA can accept any type of function. There is a lot of different types of functions, but here are some commonly used functions. A full list can be found here. A full list of functions. It's interesting. What is the full list of functions? Ah, the full list of random functions. I see what. To, okay. Mm -hmm. Got that. Um, So GA chromosome implementation is used if you want to set each gene to a different range. Ah, okay. So if you have a genome, uh, sorry, if you have a, yeah, if you have a chromosome and each of the different elements inside of the chromosome needs to be from a different kind of type, then you can define your own chromosome functions and then you can just say, okay, I want to have, in this case, we have the 
the first element is chosen from the hats, the next from the skins and the pets. Okay, yeah, that's cool. That's pretty, pretty, pretty neat. So, one thing to specify is that the chromosome length must be the same as chromosome some instructions or it would not work. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I see that. That makes sense. If you if you want a chromosome some length of three, you should specify three different um, choice functions for your different 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 genes inside of the chromosome. If the user using lambdas, if the user is familiar with lambdas, they may also be used. Isn't that what we did all, all along using lambdas? Okay, maybe there's something different here. If the user wants to construct whole chromosomes simultaneously or not, all genes are created the same way. Yes, that's got that. Using functions. Yeah, that's the other way. Okay, sure, you can just define your functions and hand over the function. Cool. And you get the output. OK, I got that as well. I got that as well. So we get the maxima. We can maximize the fitness. So if you have a, we have a problem where we want to get the maximize fitness, we can use, we have different types of fitness evaluations or fitness goals, basically. Target fitness type maximum, is it five? I find this, I find this example to be I'm just thinking if this example is actually a good one for a genetic algorithm. Because we have a problem here. I think we have a problem. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. That's that's totally fine. Um, a genetic algorithm needs to know if it's get if it's getting closer to a to a value. So is it five? Let's see how, how the fitness is, is calculated. Um, mm -hmm. For each gene in the gene and chromosome gene list, check if its value is five. If it's five, we increase the fitness by one. Yeah. So basically, you are trying to find one exact element or one exact number in a set of numbers for each of the genes and every time the genetic algorithm is not hitting this number for a gene it gets punished how would a genetic algorithm know if it get if it gets closer if one gene gets better don't know. I, I don't think the fitness function, you could use a fitness function that maybe is using the the distance, the quad quadratic distance of a of a given gene from its target gene. So you have like if if it if it chooses a four, it gets a little bit better fitness than if it chooses a one for one gene, if you know what I mean. And that way you would would actually have not this randomly throwing a, a dart dart arrow on or a dart on a dartboard and having to hope that it really hits the right number randomly. Mm. But maybe that's that's maybe that's wrong as well. I would that must be we could try that out actually. If that would exactly distance of the vector. Yes, more fives means closer to the solution, right? That's correct. Um, it's I don't think that num fives squared is what I mean. I mean like if a um, you want to have a vector of all fives, okay? 
So you could just calculate the distance from your chromosome vector to the all fives vector and use the quadratic um, distance for that. And that way you would, every time you would choose a closer vector, your fitness would get better. That's something you use in, if you, if you train neural networks, for instance, you use that quite a lot. I get that, Daniel. I just, I just think, um, I, I get that. Don't, uh, of course, um, I put this on the screen. That's, that's of course, right. It's, it's, it should, it should be an easy example. Um, and, uh, that is, and that definitely is an easy example. So don't, don't get me wrong. But it might be too easy so that people don't understand why they would use genetic algorithms. The problem is if you make it so obvious, easy that they are reading it and they are thinking, why would I ever do that? Then maybe you get, um, have the problem that you can't convince people to actually use your framework if they have no idea what a genetic algorithm is. If they, are no, they, if they know what a genetic algorithm is, you don't need a simple example like this. I don't know, I hope that makes sense. So I would go one thing, would, would, I would go one, one difficulty level higher and maybe just use a knap, a knapsack problem or some other comb combinatorial problem um, rather than just finding one number. There's, um, it's, it's just too obvious and it doesn't make really clear why you would use a genetic, a genetic algorithm for that. I, I hopefully you understand what I mean. So next, um, for example, so we have the fitness functions. Um, we put this into our GA object and to create a random, there we go, print your default genetic algorithm and boom, that's it. I think I tried this, just get this here, put it into PyCharm and see what happens. There we go. Just control run. That actually needs some time to run. There we go. So we got ourselves a nice 100 generations. Didn't find the correct solution. I think the problem is it doesn't know that it, got, it gets better. It's just the way it is. It's not getting enough feedback that one solution is actually better than the other solution. Um, that's what I meant with. So this solution here, the five with the four and an eight is exactly as good as the this one here five with four and six. And at some point you have a lot of, there are, there are just too many chromosomes that have the same fitness level. If you have your, yeah, I don't know, you have this, how many is it? Uh, what's the diff, what is the, what is the default number of chromosomes? 10, Chromos so we have 10 chromosomes and all of them, almost all of them have the fitness level eight. So the problem here is if we have all the fitness level eight or almost, it's hard to rank them. So we can't rank them anymore. And that's, that's why, we, why we stop learning at some point. If I would run this a couple of times by chance, I would get a 10. A 10 of it, a fitness level, a fitness value of 10, and then everything would be nice, and 10 would be um, would be always would be winning the race. But this is just random chance. So we don't have a con continuous learning going on. 
Anyway, but it's just a basic example. But I, I just wanted to make this, wanted to to point this out because maybe some of you ran into run into this problem that you think, why is my genetic algorithm sometimes it's learning really good and sometimes it's it's not getting anything. And most of the time it's the problem that your fitness function is not correctly chosen so that you can constantly rank your um, solutions. Um, rank your solutions in a good way so that you have like 100 solutions with just the same fitness value. And if you have all the same fitness value, the genetic algorithm basically becomes randomness. So, um, There we go. Some to the knapsack is maybe better. Yes, no, maybe exactly. Uh -huh -huh. Try your function. Oh, let's. Yeah, we can try. We can try a different. But I don't think it's what I what I do is actually I would calculate the distance. But the the thing is, this example here is for maximizing the fitness value. And my my function, that's what Daniel already said, is minimizing the distance from the goal vector to all the other vectors that are chosen. And he already spoiled that the minimum value, so let's go on back to the tutorial, the minimum fitness function evaluation is actually using this. this. Um, let's see, we go here. Back to the tutorial. So, but I just built your own fitness functions. Yes, we did that. Did that. Minimize fitness. If the fitness is to be minimized, then set it using the following. Yes, fitness type minimum. The goal of this example fitness function is to get all the genes to be the small, smallest number. So the best case scenario would be to get a chromosome with all zeros, which would have a fitness of zero. All right, so we user defined fitness. Fitness zero, add the genes value to the overall fitness. Yes, so that 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 is basically um, what I meant. So the further away one genome gets from zero, the more it gets punished by having a higher evaluation score, basically. So it's called fitness here, but yeah, okay, it, it has a higher fitness, but our goal is to find the lowest fitness and therefore if you have a gene that has, let's put it, let's make it really, really simple. We have just three genes in one in our chromosome. So a one, two, three would be better than a one, five, six. Or a zero, one, zero would be better than a zero, two, zero. In our other fitness function, where we would try to get all zeros and maximize the fitness, one, zero, one, zero and zero, two, zero would have the same fitness value and therefore would not be rankable. Um, here's the full example. So uh, we have the population size, we have the, we have the gene impulse, we have the target fitness type, um, <laughs> fitness function implementation. I actually wonder if, if it is stopping, if it's early stopping as soon as we reach um, the best possible fitness value or if that is coming later and we have to do something for that as well. Here we go. I just put this tutorial code in here and we have a population size of 25, a chromosome length of 10 and 200 generations. That is more than before, which
uh, we have this gene implementation function. So, so for each gene or chromosome, we choose a random number between 0 and 10, return random integer range A, B, including booth and points. There we go, kite copilot. If you ever wondered what randint does, it can tell you. So for everybody who just joined this live stream, what we are going today, going to do today, or what we are doing right now, is we look at EasyGA. Daniel um, Wilczek um, sent me this link to his uh, Python package that he developed with some other coders, and we are trying to get a grip get a grip on it and try to understand how it works. I haven't looked at it before, so if I'm just stumbling around and reading the tutorial, that is actually what this live stream is about. Um, so if you want to check out EasyJ, there is a link in the description below. So we are currently, we have just um, pasted this um, code here and let's run it and see if minimizing that was replaced, not run. Let's see if this minimize function, fitness function evaluation is getting us a nice genome, sorry, a nice chromosome with all zeros. And we actually, nope, nope, nope. Yes, here we go. That's what I want to see. Here we see out of the 25 uh, chromosomes, we got 10 of them to be the perfect solutions. Current generation 200. So we have we don't have an early stop now. I, I, I guess there will be some other kind of um, goal we can set. So there's currently this generation goal. So maybe there's something like a fitness goal. Could set all fitness software for, for fitness goal zero. And let's see if I run this now. I would guess. So that's just an educated guess that it would end early as soon as it, yes, here we go. It needed 72 generations to find one chromosome with a fitness of zero. Amazing. Good. So we learned fitness goal is the way to go. Uh, yeah, that, I don't, don't think that this is the instance of int. So kite is telling me here some information about what an integer is. Do we have a documentation here? No, we don't. So I'm now inside of the um, EasyGA source code and I don't see a documentation here, which I would love. A database, interesting. Yeah, we will do some more digging into the implementation, how they did it and uh, how they went on to implement this framework um, later, I guess. But for now, let's, let's go back to the tutorial and see what they have in store for us next. So what we can do now. So we have maximized fitness, we have minimized fitness, ways to run, okay? GA evolve is the easiest method to run the full genetic algorithm, the specified number of generations or until termination. I think that's what I just uh, found out about. Um, if the number of generations is not specified, it runs indefinitely or until termination if considered. Of course, this example only runs the default GA attributes. So if you want to change them, check out the basics attribute and advanced attributes section. Yeah, so the default is 15 generations. While GA active, 
allow, allows a user to not run the entire genetic algorithm at once, but step by step and print or change anything without the termination window. Ah, interesting. That's interesting. So here you can have, I guess this is an, YGA active, yeah. Is it an enumerator? Let's find out. Let's find out. It's can wonder how they documentation is in the wiki. Yes, that's that's true, Daniel. Um, if I would program a package a Python package and publish it, I think I would, of course I would have some kind of wiki and tutorials and all of that, but a function by function documentation of what you can do and what you should do just to have it in the IDE for every programmer to have it right at the fingertips is I think common practice for open source projects. So that's why I was I would suggest that you work on that. I know that's a lot of work, but um, if you're re really serious about your open source package and you want people to use it in the long run, um, it, it's, it's really helpful to have in-code documentation and a full kind of documentation that you can generate from the code. This way it won't get, won't get out of date. Out. It won't get outdated so easily because it's just in the repository as the rest of the code. Um, so, but let's, I want to find out how they implemented this here. Is it just a function that returns a true and false? And every time it's called, it's, it's doing something, but then this would make no sense. So let's see. Here we go. Uh, PyCharm, put it in here. And I want to see return returns if the GA should terminate based on the termination implemented. I see. Okay. So this is basically the termination implementation. So I can hand in here a function that basically is telling me when to uh, stop the ev evolution of my of my um, genetic algorithm, I got that. So basically what it does is it loops while the GA is active. Sorry, back. No, once more, here we go. Okay, I see. So GA evolve normally just gets no parameter and then it just runs. And at some point the termination, one of the termination um, conditions is met and then the, the, evolve, the evolution is stopped and we move on. In this case, we just evolve five steps and go on and print something and we do this as long as the termination condition is not met yet, and we can see how the evolution is ran and how it how it goes from every f chunks of five generations, how our, our chromosomes um, change over the time. That's that's a pretty nice implementation. I like that. It's it's pretty simple. It's straightforward, and it it it, it comes. It it really really produces easy easy to read code. Well done. I like that. Um, let's run this. Here we go. So we see that every every five generations, 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on, we, we print out the best chromosome and we get the best fitness. Yeah. 
that's cool that's that's very nice for for just tracking um how how your learning is progressing if you are doing the right things especially if you're just developing your genetic algorithm um that's pretty neat All righty, that's how we run it with while GA active. Let's go on. Um, next. Mm -hmm. I'll put here we go. Next step, see the different things you can do with your GA. Ways to print, ways to run graph data. Okay, I think I was, I think this is ways to run. Anyway, let's go from ways to run. Let's go to ways to print. I don't think I would just go over this. I I, I, I saw that while installing all of this, um, there was matplotlib was one of the dependencies. So I hope they made use of it. And actually, um, yeah, I can just just grab some some nice nice plots of my learning and my my involvement, my evolution, maybe. Um, functions that allow you to print the different parts of the population chromosome. Uh, I should not mumble on live stream. Sorry for that. Uh, functions that allow you to print the different parts of the population chromosome gene and different parameters like size, current generation, that is E, etc. Print generation, print population, print best chromosome, print best worst chromosome. Yeah, we saw that basically in the in the last example where we got we got this little print out here. Okay. Graph data, what's that? Ah, graph graph data. I see what you mean. It's not the graph data, it's it's you put data on a graph. Um, here you can find all the different methods to graph the progress of your genetic algorithm to change what the graph looks like. Please see the change the graph section. So we get mat, mat, mat plot lib here. And uh, what we do is ga.graph. Generation total fitness show. Okay, yeah, that's nice. So you can actually go on and see how the fitness of your population, is it total fitness? Yes, how the total fitness of your population is actually evolving and at some point hits a little threshold here and maybe learns further, maybe stops there and you are good. Um, depending on your problem, but this is actually pretty helpful um, to see if you are on the right track if you try to solve a, a problem with your genetic algorithm. Um, here we go. Graphing highest value chromosomes. Yeah, so that's why we get this little step um, pattern here, staircase pattern, because of course we just are printing the the top leader in our in our generation, and most of the time it's not changing every every generation. So at, over a couple over a couple of generations, there is just one type of chromosome that just leads um, the fitness value, and that's why you get this staircase pattern. Yes, totally. That's the same for minimizing. Oh no, it's a lowest value chromosome. But yeah, of course, if you if you are trying to minimize your fitness function, like we did with the zeros, then it makes sense to graph down the lowest value chromosome. Perfect. And you can just do some more. What is that? Generation total fitness all, graphing all of the runs in the database. Ah, okay. So that's what the database is for. So you're actually storing the the history of the of the data in a database, and which is pretty pretty smart, by the way, to use a database and not some other um, file format that you just cranked out yourself, but just using a database. I, I would guess that you use uh, SQLite or something like this, an in-memory database, or maybe just a little database temporary file that you can then save out if you want to keep this. Um, but this is pretty smart. Um, most a lot of people don't don't use databases as much as I think they could be used. 
Want to see past prompts? Check out the past prompts function. Change the graph. Types of standard plots. Okay, so here you can like basically go on and hand over different um, um, parameters and settings to your matplotlib implementation. Maybe uh, here's something. I don't know if it's a good idea to actually encapsulate matplotlib and then then hand over all the parameters through your framework to matplotlib maybe it would better would be better to just give the user of your library an easy way to integrate with matplotlib rather than just depend on matplotlib because if you are if you find a good api to interface with one graph library maybe you can interface with all the others as well and then the user of your framework can actually choose their own um, graphing library like Bokeh or Matplotlib or whatever there is, there are uh, countless. And um, so maybe you could you could rethink your integration of Matplotlib a little bit. I don't know. Maybe maybe you already have that. Maybe that's just an example here. But that's what just comes um, just by reading this. Like I said, I haven't looked at it before. This comes to mind. Create your own using matplotlib and easy GA graphing. Option two allows you to change the graph to whatever type is supported by matplotlib. Okay, but it's still matplotlib. Okay, but here you go. Here you go, and um, you have your um, easy GA. Um, you got your GA object. You do the evolution, and then what you do? You go and get the values. And uh, that's all. Okay, so basically, yeah, you use the PLT. Uh, where do you? Yeah, the PLT interface of Matplotlib, PyPlot. Um, okay, I, I got that. So this is basically calling the 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 PLT functions, and PLT is implemented as a big state machine. So that's how you integrate there. Maybe that would be enough. Just just but yeah, the other the other stuff around it it makes it easier to use your. Uh, genetic algorithms library and because it's called easy ga it i guess it makes makes sense to make it as easy as possible yeah all right so that's the basic stuff we got the basic stuff covered here okay can we do something with it already I was thinking about a little example I would want to try out to program here on stream, which most likely will end up in a big mess. So uh, maybe um, there's this thing. There was one comment of uh, on one of my videos. Um, it was someone asking if you could solve um, a circle circle packing problem using genetic algorithms. And I haven't tried it actually, but I think this would be possible. Hmm. But I don't know if I feel confident enough to actually start coding something up from scratch that I have never done before live on the internet but yes let's let's try it let's let's first maybe um let me just get something here problem so for all of you that don't know the circle packing problem it is that one here so what we are going, to, what we are trying to do, is, and I have to revisit this as well. But I think the idea is, um, how we can pack unit circles into the smallest possible larger circles. So unit circles are circles 
with a now we go <laughs> normally i would just is it radius or is it diameter it's radius of one yes so sorry so we uh, a unit circle is a circle with a radius of one and the idea is um how can we put as um, how how can we position unit circles in a way that we can get the smallest outer circle around it? So what we have to do here is to program uh, program stuff with circles. This is going to be quite interesting because I actually have to look up some of the math. So. Um, so I just put this here and see what we do. If you, if I have some math pros in the chat, you can feel free to help me, um, because yes, I am. Okay. What we basically want to do is to find out a way so first thing sorry i have to think while i'm i'm talking so um this is the problem with with that endeavor here right now um the first thing that we want to check out if we are when we are writing a genetic algorithm is to um, define our genome. So how can we represent a solution for a given problem? A given problem would be for us, we have 10 circles and each of this circle we want to position them in a way that they are not overlapping and they are they are not overlapping but they are in some way positioned that the circle we need to surround all of them is as small as possible so what we do is we have a minimize fitness problem here just just start programming without having ideas always good but let's let's just create our ga object and there was something that was um ga uh something with type target fitness type i think it was min if i remember correctly We just see. That's, that's why I want to have an inline documentation to see if I'm right. <laughs> I think it was the right. I think it was. Okay, so target fitness type, we want to minimize it. How can we encode a solution for that? Um, Let's say we want to solve this problem for five circles. So let's get, get ourselves a little constant here so we can play around with it. Um, so we would need a chromosome with five positions for circles just stop this buzzing here and so we need 10 values in our chromosome but this values the values are not um we could we could just go x coordinate for circle number one y coordinate for circle number one x coordinate for circle number two y coordinate for circle number two 
and so on. So we would need a chromosome length if we I just go with this idea. Maybe maybe it's bullshit, but let's go with this idea. Um, and say we have a chromosome length of num circles times two. All right. So far, so good. So now we need to um, define in what area we would want to position our circles. And so if we have a, if we have a, in coordinate system where the where the center is zero zero, um, we could just go on and 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 in order to have a range of of space that we want that we need in order so that the genetic algorithm has some kind of a of an idea how to position the the circles. Um, the worst way we could position. Five circles is to put them all in one row or all into one column. And that would give us. Um, Benny, hi, welcome back. Um, what we are going to do is uh, we are trying to solve the circle packing problem. Maybe we try to solve the circle packing problem and we try to um, position as five circles in a way that the surrounding circle is as, as small as possible. So basically that's what we want to do. And I'm just just thinking loud and I'm trying to 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 get a, get an idea of what to do and I'm, that's that's basically maybe that's interesting how I approach stuff, um, and most of the time I, I approach stuff and it's wrong, and then I have to go back and do it again. So all you see in the videos is, of course, pre-programmed. So it seems like I'm just knowing what I'm doing, but um, most of the time I just do it a couple of times until I know what I do. Anyway, um, so what I was just going to say the 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 most stupidest way to position all of the circles is to put them in one line or in one row. So this way uh, we would have a um, another circle with a diameter of five. So that's pretty big for five circles. So um, we could just choose our um, genome. We need this. Um, we need this genome implementation function. And uh, what was it? Uh, gene impl or something like this. Yes, it's gene impl, and we want to have gene impl to be a lambda. What am I writing here? Lambda, and um, the circles are symmetrical. It's unit circles, so I don't know what you mean, but it's it's um, basically a circle with a a radius of one. So, yeah, it's not an oval, but maybe you mean something else with symmetrical. Are the circles symmetrical? I don't know. In my idea, a circle is always symmetrical, otherwise it's an oval. Ah, you mean same, same size. Yes, all the circuits are uh, unit circuits. Now, now I got you. Perfect. Um, so we need a random, I need random, so I don't, so here's another thing, kite, little plug here, there's a link in the description below if you want to try it out and you want to support the channel, click it. Um, here you see all this little, little um, autocomplete things that I get here is basically um, kite telling me um, what a good random function is or what a random function I could use. I don't know if that is actually helping me. So now it tells me that I should use zero. I don't know why, but it doesn't make sense. Um, let's see what, <laughs> sorry for that little 
So what Kite basically tries to do is to, that is bullshit here, is basically trying to help me to write the code. A, there's an AI that actually tries to predict what I'm going to write next. And it's interesting what it sometimes wants to do. So um, I just do it like this. I get a random um, number between 0 and 0 0.99999. And I want my, um, so what, I'm, what I was currently doing is I was figuring out how big of a, of a space would I maximal, max, would I need in order to fit five circles in a row and five circles in a column. So that's the, that's the worst choice the genetic algorithm could make. So we have, um, because the origin of the, of the coordinate system is in the middle, we have 2.5 2 units up. 2.5 units down. So what we are what we are doing is we going with uh, 2.5, but the middle of the the middle of the circle is because it's a unit circle, and we have and the unit circle has. Let me just think about it. Let me just I have to put something here. One moment. Radius one, yes. So there we go. So we have five unit circles on top of each other, which gives it a length of 10. Five here, five there. Correct. So the first thing that I would do is I go minus five plus random times 10. So now I get a, a, a number between minus 5 and plus 5. But the center of a circle is not at 5 or minus 5, but actually at minus 4.5 and plus 4.5, correct? Uh, yes, 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 exactly. So I can just, I can shrink this little area that the genetic algorithm chooses is its um, genetic implementation, uh, sorry, its genomes from a little bit and we go and we do it like this. There we go, that's it. So now we have, um, we now we have the following. We have an, a genetic algorithm that tries to minimize its fitness function, which we haven't, which we haven't wrote, written yet. And it has a chromosome of the length of um, the number of circles we have in our problem times two, because we want to have um, the X and Y coordinates. And each of this, these genes is choosing from a range between minus 4.5 and random nine. So now this is basically dependent on our number of circles. So I have to actually, um, implement this, these are magic numbers right now, and I want to replace the magic numbers. So the, the thing is, I guess I have to go minus num circles, minus a plus 0.5, here we go. Um, nope, then we, yes, what is all of this going? So like this, and we go, num circles, num circles minus one, and we put it in brackets. So now if I increase my num circles, if you want to try like harder problems here and, and try to pack more circles, this line of code auto automatically adapts. Okay. Uh, will you do a visualization of this? I will try. I don't know how much I how much I will get done. I don't know. I have I have a little bit of time left on my hands, but let's see how much we will get done. Actually, it shouldn't be that hard. I could use matplotlib to just draw some circles. Yeah, I think I will try that. There's a random uniform low high function. Yeah, there is. There is actually. Um, I just didn't want to 
<laughs> I was just using the random function that I know the best. But of course, I could use a different random function. Um, but it doesn't make it better for this. All of this, you know, and Jack, that's a good tip actually here. I just put it on the screen for everybody to read. It's a really, really good tip. The problem is when I start working on something, I just try to get my ideas down as quickly as I can. And I will then go back and try to rewrite it a couple of times in order to make it better readable and better maintainable. So this now I'm just in the phase where I try on one hand to think, on the other hand to speak, to program, and while that being on the internet and reading the chat. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's why I might be a little bit um, confused. I seem maybe a little bit confused here and there, and actually I am, but um, that's because I'm just verbalizing everything in order to give you an idea how I approach a problem. And normally I would just sit like this. And I would type a little bit and then I go sit like this. But this would be pretty, pretty boring to watch, I guess. Anyway, back to the matter at hand, back to the problem. So we now have um, our gene, we have our chromosome length, and now we need a fitness function. So we need to define what is a good solution. Um, a good solution is defined by the maximum, is defined by the area or the radius, which is basically, uh, basically dependent. The area is dependent of the, on the radius um, of our enclosing circle. So let's write a fitness function. Let's try. Let's try to write a fitness function. Uh, fun. Oh, wrong programming language. Def. <laughs> fitness. Funk. All righty. Sorry if I do some curly brackets or something. I was just writing. I worked. I worked a lot in Kotlin the last couple of weeks, so maybe my my Python syntax is a little bit rusty. Um, fitness function. Um, <laughs> let me just. I just need to have a look on the documentation because I don't remember what I'm getting in as a parameter. 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 Maximize fitness, was it here? So, so for everybody that joined and does, doesn't know what we are doing right now, we are looking at EasyGA, a little Python package. It's not that little, actually. A Python package developed by Daniel uh, Wilczak and some fellow coders. And we are now moved on from the, we read the tutorial page and try to understand everything onto actually solving our first genetic algorithm problem using using this framework. And now I'm back inside of the documentation to actually find out what I'm doing. Here we see, so we get a chromosome in there. So we get this and from here we go on. So what we have now, we get a random, random number of We get a set of 10 numbers. And we now have to splice these numbers up, split these numbers up um, into tuples of x and y coordinates. And so that we can calculate the min and the max positions of the circles on the x and y axes in order to calculate the space they need inside of another circle, which will then be the radius or the, the diameter of this circle we can use as the fitness value for our genetic algorithm. And we try to minimize that. 
All right. So let me just, I have to look up, look up uh, some functions. I need a functions to split a list every two, what is the good way? What is, what is the py, Python, uh, there's a Python string? No, I don't want Python string split. I know there's a list, so. Chromosome split, what can split do for us? Split. Oh. Yes. What I do need, need. So what I would love were Python typens. Something like list of float. So that I can have more IDE support for me here. Import this name for typing list. So we put this in here. So now my IDE knows that I'm talking to a list. And we go again. And now we can look at this here. So split, split. What does split do? Can we have some information on this? No. I think split is not really defined for lists, is it? Uh, any tips in the chat? No. Good. So I have to find out um, split list into tuples. Just want to have it list of tuples. Yes. So now I do what every programmer does. I just Google a little bit and look at Stack Overflow um, because I don't have the Python standard library documentation in my head. Interesting. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay, that's pretty cool. I put it on the screen here so you can look at it as well. Um, so I was just searching for a way to um, get a list of tuples. And that's a quite interesting way. I have I didn't think of, about this, of this. So what you want to do is you get an iterator from your list and then you zip the iterator with itself. So every time the iterator is called, it gets one item, then another item, and so on, so on. So we get, we zipping every second element together. Pretty, pretty cool. So I didn't think about that. And most of the time, I, I, I don't know if, if I would use this in production code, to be honest. I think if you do, you would need to add a comment there. Because if I would run into this just like that in production code or on code I work on, I, I wouldn't be sure that I actually would understand it without a lot of thinking. So, but anyway, let's get ourselves an iterator like, like this um, from our chromosome. So we go through our genes. So this is our gene iterator here. And now we are zipping it. And this is giving us our coordinates. And we go on and zip the iterator with itself. There we go. So now we have coordinates, x and y coordinates. Um, now we want to find the minimum and the maximum. Actually, do we need the minimum or the maximum? So let's let's look at the uh, the circle packing problem one more time because I'm just thinking if we if the circle that we are trying to optimize is in the middle of it's not stating that so yes no no I think we need to we need to find the middle of we find the we need to find the middle for each axis in relation to the circles that genetic that our chromosome has. So if our chromosome has two circles on the left side of the 
um, of the origin, so both in the negative x um, areas, um, we would put our um, encompassing circle on this side and not um, going out from the um, from the origin of the total of the whole um, of the whole calculation space. Um, I hope that makes sense. I, I know that I'm I'm just babbling a little bit around. Um, I hope that makes sense. It totally made sense in my head, though. Um, so let's try to move on. Um, the next thing is to find the minimum x and the minimum y coordinates. I think we can do this. I'm just thinking. Thinking, thinking, thinking of the coordinates. Yeah, so uh, this is not the most uh, efficient code, but that doesn't matter, I think. So we get our x coordinates, we get our y coordinates ah, for C in for C in coordinates yes so and now we can get our maximum and minimum y or x coordinates by simply going min x coordinates min x and my max x no let's go like this and we get our min y max y by getting our min y coordinates and our max y coordinates there we go and now we have that we can actually calculate our circle around our circles i guess because if we have our now i would like to have a whiteboard or something but uh, let's find out um, i know there is something like this online whiteboard you know this is my first stream so I need to, to need some tooling here as well. Miro, I don't want Miro. I want something like really, really simple. Nothing fancy. Hmm. Nothing fancy. How about? I don't want to start Photoshop. I think when I, if I start Photoshop now, my computer will totally. Uh, be unusable. Anyway, I think you 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 get the idea. So we have, I just make it with my hands right now. So we have the um, minimum x and the maximum x coordinates of all of our circles, and we have the minimum y and the maximum y coordinates of all of our circles. So in order to have all the circles inside of this, we need um, we need a circle of the width. Uh, the, the width of min max x minus min x. So the width of the circle is max x minus min x. And the height is max y minus min y. Easy so far. The thing is, not only this, because now we are looking at the center points, there's also a little bit of space 
There's also a browser version lightweight. Lies use paint or something. I'm on a Mac. I don't have paint. There is no paint on Mac. <laughs> That's the problem. I actually, Benny, I will I will try to find something that I want to use for the next stream if there will be a stream at any point. Currently, I think it, it's it's quite fun to do this. I will see how yeah, how this is actually working out in the long run. Or if it's better to just make videos. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, you can let me know if you if you like it so far. Um, so max x minus min x plus one, because we are looking at the centers of the of the of the circles right now, and having this unit circle, we have two, <laughs> actually two units around them, so we get the width and the height. And the same goes with max y and min y, actually, anyway. And now we have to find the one dimension which is bigger. And this is the diameter of our enclosing circle. Diameter, diameter um, is the maximum of width and height. Here we go. And this would be, I think this would be enough to actually use as a fitness value. Because if the diameter shrinks, the circle space that is needed to surround all the other circles is smaller. And therefore, we are getting a better solution. Return diameter. OK. Maybe we have a fitness function. I'm not sure, actually. I would have to. Um, Thank you very much for the encouragement. I, I, I am glad you like the stream so far. Uh, I feel a little bit that I'm like stumbling uh, um, stumbling down stumbling down a staircase or something. So I'm just I'm just improvising here, but I, I think maybe that's that's helping helping some of you to for whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, so we have a fitness function. We can put this fitness function now into our GA object with, 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 yeah, with what was, what that fitness impl or something? Fitness function impl, of course, easy. Fitness func. There we go, fitness func. So now, what do I need? What what else do I need? I have my fitness function, which tells me if a chromosome is good. I have my gene function. Actually, we didn't we didn't we never talked about um, a selection function. We never talked about a crossover function and all of that. But you know what? I trust Daniel that he has chosen some good default implementations for that. And now I will just run this and see what we get. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have ga.evolve. And let's uh, do it like this while ga active, not acquire, active. We want to GA evolve five. And I want to see if I actually get print best chromosome GA point print uh, worst chromosome. Do I get actually, do I get a fitness value uh, with that as well? Can I, can I get the uh, GA print best chromosome, print score, print score? What's that? I don't know. It doesn't work. It's... Anyway, just, just, just run it now and see if anything is happening. Let's go. 
Yeah. It's broken. <laughs> oh, let's put this here. Anyway, that would be nice if I just would just write something and it just works out of the box, but that's idiotic. Oh, what is this problem? Line in set all fitness in evolve set all fitness yeah evolve min max not supported between instances of gene and gene. Hmm. Okay, so what we do, what we have here, let's 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 just can I just have a breakpoint here, please? PyCharm, I want to have a breakpoint, not bookmark, no. Ah, here we go. Breakpoint, debug. I think we need to look at the data structures that we have here, because I was just expecting that the, that I get a list of floats, but of course I don't. I get I get a list of gene objects, but you see, of course, here are our gene objects. We have the gene list, and let's see. A gene is basically has a value, so I could I have to. Um, actually, because the gene itself is not comparable, I can't use min max on it. So I need to uh, convert it into um, my. So we make it like this and we call this gene. So now I just use. And I import this. Can I import this? Import structure gene. Yeah, perfect. So why does it have a value? Ah. Idiot me. There we go. There's actually an error I see. So value, now I get the value. This must be a one. Good that we are here again. So now I have now this must be now this must be a list of floating point values. Let's check this out. Run. Oh, wow, there's actually something running. Ugh, I have to go stop. This doesn't look good. Stop main. There we go. Debug main. And here we are. OK. So um, <laughs> next here, we don't have a fitness. That's totally cool. We have this. So we get the iterator. That's cool. We get the coordinates. Um, yes. And now we get the x and the y coordinates. And we see that the x coordinates is filled and the y coordinates is not filled, which is a problem. <laughs> Let's see what is happening here. It's debugging time. Amazing. So first of all, we have 10, 10 chromosomes. I, I just have to get this away and make this a little bit bigger here. So let's see. OK, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that works. So then we get our coordinates, which is a zip object. If I go in here in the console and I go and get myself a list from my coordinates, I should be able to see a list which is empty. Which is interesting. Ah, yeah, yeah. And did somebody find it? There is a wiki page for the structure chromosome. I think you want to use chromosome gene value list to get the list of gene values first. Uh, yes, that's another good way. Thank you, Jack. Let's do it like this. So the problem is that I want to have. Not I can just get here and so first of all what I do is I just put in the chromosome chromosome. So, so now I know that's a chromosome. And now I can 
So what did you say, Jack? Let's put it on the screen because that is what I love here. That's it's really good. That's good input. Um, chromosome. And you say there's gene value list. Okay, let's get it. Gene list. Gene value list. There's actually a gene value iterator. Daniel, not bad. Not bad. So I just get my iterator here. Now I have an iterator. Amazing. So now I can zip my two iterators. And the problem is, so I just figured out why my Y coordinates are empty. And the thing is the following. The zip function is returning an iterator itself, which iterates over the zipped values. So it's it can be read. So if you if you go in on next, it gets you the next pair, next, the next pair, next, the next pair. And at some point, it runs out of data and it stops. So what is going on? X is getting getting the first pair, first value, all the way through, through the fifth pair. And then we start on with the Y coordinates, but the iterator is still at the last pair, and then we get just empty results. So that this here is basically bullshit. So we go in and make a list of the zip. So we just we write it down into a list, and then now we can work with that. We have the iterator here, and I hope that I get the float values, so I don't need the values here. And this, to my understanding, should work better now. Let's try it out. Iterator, Jack, you are, you are a genius. Put an iterator in there. It's always good to have an iterator. And the best way is if you understand iterators, not what I just did with the zip and just calling the iterator twice. Um, it is actually a pretty good concept because it makes your program way faster because it's lazy evaluation. Here we go, iterator. We get a generator object. And we get this, perfect. And let's see, we get the coordinates, which is a list of tuples of x, x, and y coordinates. Five of them, perfect. That works as well. So now we split them up. We split them up. So let's see, minus 2, 3, and minus 0 0.447. And yes, that works. That's close enough. So we get now the min and the max, min and the max. So we have min x, max x, min y, max y. We got them here. We calculate the width of our circle that we would need to encompass this. The height, the height is higher. So because the circle has just one diameter, it's not an oval. We choose the, the bigger one, and that's the fitness for our chromosome. Amazing. That was quite easy, GA. No, let's let's run it. I don't know. Um, so it runs. So that's that's true. It runs. Um, I'm not sure if it learns. So I will just go over to the Wikipedia page and copy myself a little bit of code here because I liked, ah, let's see, I, there was this one, ooh, that's something different here, ways to set up, initialization, and uh, here we go, ways to run. And we have something, I want this here. Print generation, print best chromosome. And so I just get me, get me this. I put this down here, let's see. And I clean it up a little. So 
So, pop, 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 and I want this. And nice. Run, run. Main, yes, main. We need to graph, graph it, visualization. Yes, 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 yes. I will, I will, I will. But it seems like, look at this, look at this. 2.735, 2.781. It got better. The cool thing is, this circle packing thingies are actually solved for a given number. At some point, they don't know. They are just, they are not sure about that anymore. So let's look at this. Five, five, what is it? Enclosing circle diameter, five is 2.701. And we got 2.735. I think that's close enough, ladies and gentlemen. This thing works. The thing is, we can't see it. So let's grab it and let's put a visualization in there. And this was fun. This was fun. Let's do some graphing. How, <laughs> how was the graphing? Um, it was something with ga.graph. I like the I like the API. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack and Daniel did a great job here. It's 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 quite good. It's good for some prototyping. Um here we go. So graph, graph. Lowest, highest value, generation total fitness. Why not go? Let's do it like this. And control run. I see, but this time we were not so good. <laughs> 2.85, but still, still pretty close. The current generation limit, I would, would guess that's, um, I could just let it run a little bit longer and we will see so where do i have my uh, my graphs why is it not showing is it because i did it wrong or is it because i'm in this presentation mode normally pycharm shows it on the on the right hand side um i just exit this i don't know how Exit presentation mode. Now everything gets a little bit. Yes, let's go like this. Sorry, it's small again. Sidebar, is it, is it here? Plots. Normally it, 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 it appears here. Maybe I did something wrong. You have to show it. All right. Ah, okay. So you don't do this um, instantly. It's like in, in matplotlib. Alrighty, yeah, that's definitely makes sense. Thank you very much. Show. Who needs kite if you have the two people that wrote this stuff right in the shed next to you? But if you want to have kite, there's a link in the description below. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so this is the generation total fitness here. So we see that's pretty cool. So it really gets really it gets better really quick at the beginning then it it stuck a little bit but here we we basically find a new solution which is like pinching through this threshold and boom down we go and here we are like basically going up and down and and waiting so Um, can we have the URL to the page with solutions? Yes, it's um, it's a page, a pretty small page called Wikipedia. <laughs> no, I'm just just I am just kidding. Here you go, my friends. Um, it's this one. It's a pretty nasty URL, though. I hope it works. If you just Google circle packing. 
and you, you find the Wikipedia page and you will find that here. So what I want to do now is, um, so now, now we are doing this. We had this question at the beginning of, of the stream. There um, was the question, what is elitism for and why is it important? And I don't know if elitism is actually um, um, enabled from the start. Maybe Daniel or or Jack can answer that question if you have elitism right from the start or if I have to actually uh, enable it here in the framework. Ah, perfect, good. Glad you found it, Benny. Amazing. So yeah, I, I actually I want to try out different numbers of circles later as well. So. Um, this page will come in handy and we will see how far we can get without actually blowing my MacBook out of the window. Um, next. Um, let's see what we can do with elitism. So that you can see better, I will enter the presentation mode again. And I hope it's not getting full screened, but it does. And I exit the full screen mode. Exit full screen. And here we are again. All right. Next up, uh, elitism. So, elitism, elitism. Let's find this, find this structure, gene based built in method, parent selection, crossover, survivor selection. That's what we are using, that we are looking for. Survivor selection is the process, process responsible for filling the next generation with enough chromosomes after the children are added. Yes. Uh, Use for survival selection code for fill in best, fill in random, parents then random. You build your own. No, you fill best. I want to have the best. Um, built in survival selection implementations. Easy GA survival selections. Best. Is that actually already enabled? Okay, so I have to understand that right now. Survivor selection is the process responsible for filling the next generation with enough chromosomes after the children are added. What does that mean, after the children are added? So you basically first cross over and after that you do elitism if there's still spots left or hmm. I don't I don't get it. I would do I would do it all the other way. I would just add my survivors and then I add as many children as I need. That would be the way I would go about it, but <laughs> Let's see. Um, GA survivor selection impl. Um, I just put it in here. Why is that? Cannot find reference to survivor selection. Easy GA survivor. Module. No. Should that work? Is that? Hmm. <laughs> Hmm. 
Okay, I think I'm going off of off off on a tangent here. I'm just a little bit so sorry for being so quiet, but I'm a little bit um, confused right now. So PyCharm is not finding this module here. I just copied this from your page. The names were shortened. Like how? Is Survivor or like this? And then, I don't know. OK, so with it should be Survivor with a big, so like this. But this is still not working. And my, 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 my question is, my first question is, what is the default? What is the default? I'm just looking if I can find what the default is for, I don't know, for, for, the, for the elitism, but I don't see it. Am I GAI? It's in attributes, of course. So default GA methods, fitness function. It is, is it five? Is make population? Make there we go. Parent selection, parent rank tournament, individual single point. Perfect. Crossover population sequential. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fill in best. So basically, I don't need to to set it. it. It's already set. But how do I know how many um, elites are chosen? And how do I know how many children are born? Maybe you can help me understand that. I don't. I don't. I don't see where I can actually. Hmm. Okay, default is elitism. I got that now. I found that. Um, so I don't need to set it in my in my code. But what I don't understand is how many elites are chosen. That's pretty interesting. That's something I need to understand. Otherwise, mm, I'm not sure if, if I'm just getting my children or elites, and maybe I should read the documentation more. So let's let's see. Initialization crossover. It must be at this. Crossover is the process responsible for creating new chromosomes based on the mating pool and adding them to the population. Got that. Use for crossover. Crossover is broken down into population and individual methods. The population methods are used to select pairs of parents from the mating pool. The individual methods are used to cross pairs of parents. Yes, I got that as well. So single point, single sequential actually we have we could change our crossover function because it's not actually actually it's not a good idea to cross over between x and y so we maybe we could implement our own crossover function that only crosses at even in the indices so that we don't split up a pair of x and y but that's that's another thing <sighs> Uniform, yes, I, I got that. That's 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 not the problem. The problem that I, I I try to figure out right now: how many elites are chosen from my former generation and put in the next one? 
and I don't see that information here. Normally I have something like, okay, take the two bests or take the three bests, and then it's just put into the next generation. But how is how does it work here? Uh, maybe 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 you could answer that. But anyway, I, I guess so. Before I bore you longer with my dabbling around this topic, I, I just move on right now. I think it's 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 it doesn't really matter. So we have this. Um, we have we have we have elitism in place somehow. I guess. I think the parent selection of the crossover stuff has stuff related to what you are looking for. Okay. Um, parent selection. Parent selection works by selecting parents from the population and adding them to the mating pool. This may be done by three methods. Set parent, add parent, or directly changing the mating pool. I got that. Sorts the population. I got that. Compute parent amount. Compute the size of the mating pool given the length of the current population and the parent ratio using uses a minimum of two parents. Okay. Hmm. Fitness selection roulette. Roulette selection is one type of fitness selection. Oh, yeah, that, that's what I use most of the time. Default is tournament. It's interesting. We could just try what it's, what's better, but I use most, most of the time I use the roulette one. Build your own. Okay. So the parent selection chooses how many parents, and then the crossover chooses how to make children from them. Yeah, I know that. Um, that, I guess, is correct. Crossover is broken down. Yeah, I got that. A single point. So the single point built in cross implementation, sequential. And single point. Interesting. Anyway, doesn't matter. Let's let's move on. So we got this. What I want to do now is to actually um, run this, not um, in a fixed number of generations, but until I hit a certain fitness value. And because we have the list of um, we have the list of optimal values for our um, circle packing. We can just use that and um, check it out. So we have like uh, for five. For five um, circles, we had this value here. So we can, I think we could, there was something like a GA pop dot. Um, <laughs> uh, fitness goal exactly, and this must be this, but not exactly this. But I would would give him some slack. So if he gets under two point seven one, I would be quite happy with that. So we have that. And the next thing we can do is to GA um, generation goal. Let's crank this up to 1,000 and see what happens. Let, let this run again. Get some code running here. There we go. 2, 6, 7, 5, 8, 7, 5, 5, 2, 1. That is pretty good.
maybe there's some problem in the code still, right? Because normally it shouldn't go under 7, 2.701, so to be sure. But um, in order to find that, I would say we try to visualize that a little bit. And for that, we need matplotlib. There we go, PLT. So we have this graph, and after that, we now um, want to um, print our our top solution. Let's print our top solution. So let's see how we get the chromosome for our top solution. Best, print best, uh, past run. What was it? Run, current generation, population. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So now it's no last run. There was something that I could access the last data from the database, so I can actually, um, so I can actually go on and so what was it graph data or was it in ways to print ways to print <laughs> GA point dot current fitness, current generation, current generation. I want what want the generation. I want all of them. Uh, best. So guys, how do I get the best? Um, result from my ev evolution as a as a chromosome. How do I get the best one? Max, min, best, print, reset. Does anybody have an idea? Jack, Daniel. Was there something like best chromosome? No, it was not. That's what I was thinking as well, Benny. I would just go like ga.best chromosome, and then I want to have it, but I don't get it. Typing after you run. What? I'm looking for, so I have run my, 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 my evolution. So now I want to have the result of this. GA population zero. Ah, okay, that's good. So we get the population. There we go. That's what I wanted to have. And I can go in, and this is my best, my best solution, correct? Amazing. That's what I wanted to have. Best chromosome. So, and with that, I want now um, want to this. This is what I want to inspect and see how it looks when I print it on the on the on the mat matplotlib. So, oh, um, let's do get ourselves a little function here because what we have now is a chromosome, and what we do here is to actually. Um, I don't want to have, I don't want this to be doubled code, 
So I refactor uh, extract method and get um, coordinates from chromosome with a chromosome. There we go. Perfect. So I have a new method here. And I can use this method to get my coordinates from chromosome, best chromosome. There we go. Coordinates. And, and now I need to plot them. Let's have a little bit of documentation next to me here. Mat plot lib plot circles. Uh, okay, PLT circle. Ah, oh, that's good. Okay, so we get this, then we go PLT circle, color, I don't care, blue. Um, it's a unit circle. Let me just see, is this um, X, Y, radius, color, fill. Exactly, so I can go and I don't fill them. The radius is correct. And so now I can, and this is actually pretty cool because this is a tuple and I get a, get a list of tuples here. So what I can do is for chord in coordinates, I just put in the plot circle and do it, do it like this, chord. And this should plot circles. I don't know if this is actually, um, if this is um, having a problem with the um, other graph that's showing, or if it's just creating two graphs now, we will see. So I run this again. At this time, maybe I should um, see a graph. No, I don't. I don't see anything. What did I do wrong? I'm not a big, um, I'm not uh, a pro when it comes to, ah. to matplotlib, I have to say that, but yeah, that's how it is. Uh -huh. I need, okay, why ever. And then let's do it like this, figure show and go. Yes, uh, there is a figure. I don't think there's anything on it. Most likely because I, let me just get met plot lib is sub plot here. I have my kite. Let's see if kite can help me. Open copilot pilot. Kite, where are you? Kite. Hello. There it is. Perfect. So, um, subplots. What do I get here? N rows and codes. Thick size. Number of rows defaults to one. Yeah, that's 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 not that's not helping us. Let's make it 10. 10. So anything else? I don't know. 
and run again. What? NumPy in the error is not no attribute to add patch. Uh, what? What is wrong? <laughs> no. I plot subplots. That's not what I want. Stupid. Stupid me. I think we have to close the previous window to show the next one. I don't think so, actually. Um, if I if I remember correctly, you see this is the first plot it can generate, the relationship between generations and the other one. And then there is another plot right generated afterwards, and that's just empty. And I think my problem here is that I'm not really understanding what I'm doing when it comes to uh, matplotlib. So, yeah. Um, so I have to read a little. So let's do this together. Why not? Let's learn it. Um, so what was what, what, what I doing? Create a figure and set off and a set of subplots. Makes community create a common layout of subplots. I don't need subplots. I don't care about subplots. I just want one plot. <laughs> Give me one plot, and then it's, that's all I want. So there must be a gallery um, examples. I just want to have it really quick right now. Um, Filled polygon. Here, yeah, scatter demo. I just want to have a scatter plot. That's all I need. So what is helping you? There we got this AX scatter. Okay. What does it put in there? Delta diff price. Price data. Get sample data. Okay, load number record. Open close and so on of Google price data. All right, price data only the get the most recent 250 trading days. And then numpy diff. Okay, the deltas of the, so this is basically an array. Okay, let's get a plot of Ys versus X with the varying marker size and color. So I can put in X coordinates and Y coordinates and size. Okay, maybe. Let's put this out of the way and see if that works. So we get the coordinates here. And coordinates. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And the next thing that we wrote here is to split our coordinates. So we have the coordinates and we split them up. Um, I just make a function for that as well. Introduce extract method, split coordinates, and there we go. Split coordinates is now a new function, and we can do this down here as well. So we get the um, call for the x and y coordinates, so I don't have duplicated code like this. Then I have the plt subplot. I put this in. I do. Um, a x dot scatter 
correctly. Open Copilot. Where is it? There we go. Scatter. And that is obviously wrong. So what we want to put into the scatter, we put this up here, we go down there, we put, put the x coordinates in there, we put the y coordinates in there, we put a size in there, which is one, and then we show this and see what comes out of there. Ooh, ah, we see something. I see something. There, there, there are little dots. Let's go. Can I go? This is actually not really. So I think the size is currently too small. And this is actually not looking like anything right now. It just looks pretty much like random noise. <sighs> Float or very like I got that Sys shape of you know the marker size and points. The default is what is the C float or array like shire shape. You see, the visualization is uh, harder than I thought to be. Maybe I should um, uh, so let's make it explicit that I mean the S, but it doesn't change anything. Um, so I lost the chat. Anything happened? If it were if it were me, I would probably just do a scatter plot and scale the point size up like crazy. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just coding and I missed this one. This is this is hilarious. <laughs> Amazing. If it were me, I would probably just do a scatter plot and scale the point size up like crazy. Yes, that's uh, yes. Let's try that. Maybe I'm doing something completely wrong or. Scale it up. They are just all over the place. This, this is, this is, this is bullshit. This is not working. And you see all of them. Hmm. Okay, I think we have some more problems here than uh, than I thought, and I think our first um, attempt to get a good solution was actually maybe just a coincidence. Maybe we should go back and look at our fitness function. Um, and see if we did something obviously wrong. So we get the coordinates from the from the chromosome. I, I, I get that. We split them up. The splitting, let's go in there, is just going all over the coordinates and one just takes the first element Um, takes the first element and 
the, the y coordinates are the second element of each tuple. So we got that. Then we have, um, we get the minimum, the maximum, the minimum, the maximum. Got that. We calculate the maximum x minus the minimum x. Let me just think about this really quick. That's correct, I guess. So if we get the maximum x and the minimum x, let me say, mm, if they are both the same, we get two because of the circle of a Un the, the size of unit circle is two, correct. Then we get max x and min y, correct as well, width and height, sounds good. Is this bullshit here? I think this is maybe bullshit. If we put all of the circles, each of them has a diameter of two. I will I will try that Benny. That's a good idea. Let me just get my 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 thought through here. Um, so we have we have a circle which has a diameter of two. We put five next to each other. We have a maximum size of ten. But each but the center point of its of a circle is one diameter, a one half of a diameter, so one unit in from the right and in from the left. So we have a maximum range to choose from of eight. That is that is that is something that's wrong here. It must be num circles minus one and times num circles minus two. Uh, Jack, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe my fitness function is completely wrong. Maybe my fitness function is completely wrong. But let's let's just just check this here real quick. So random is giving me a value between zero and one. If I get a zero, I'm on the farthest spectrum. So I get I'm at minus four. If I get a one, I'm at idiot. There, there was a big, there was something missing here. Yeah, so that was wrong. So I need to get one and I get eight units to get to the other side. So I have to calculate num circles times two minus two. So that is, that is, so that was the first myth mistake. The other one. So let's just run this again, see if something changes. Not really. It actually looks always the same. Maybe my plotting is just to totally off. Does it look always the same? Not really. Not, no, okay, not, not, not always. It looks always wrong, but not always the same. So Jack says, 
oh, I can't really figure out how this fitness function is working. Don't you have to look at all of the points somehow? I actually do look at all of the points because um, I have this min max. I'm, I'm searching for the minimum y coordinate and the maximum y coordinate of all points. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe that's wrong. So if I have a, have a cloud of points and I want to find out the minimum x of all the points, then it must be enough to choose, just compare all the x coordinates and just take the smallest one, correct? Yes. If I want the biggest one, it's the biggest. Yes. Okay. All righty. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just put this here. Um, suck. Nope, not this. It's time to draw something. It's time to draw something. Maybe it should be maximizing the, the sum of the distance from each circle to the nearest circle. I think it's, 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 it's much simpler than that. I think this is not totally wrong what I do here. I'm actually not sure if it's... Hmm. We just make this big here. So I'm actually not sure if my fitness function is wrong, or if my scattering of my, of my if my printing is wrong, because the fitness value that comes out of there is not so bad, to be honest. I'm just just opening opening Photoshop here, and maybe I, we can draw something. Um, so, create new document. Custom create. There we go. Let's see. Alrighty. So, what we have is we have a bunch of circles each of which is of the same size. So we put one here, we put one there, there, here, and here. So this is our five circles. And what we want to find now is the smallest circle or the, we want our fitness is the circle, the unit circle that fits all of them. So maybe I did something wrong here. So, so, so. Command. Let me just. So something like this. Um, let's make this another color. 
here like this actually let's use this come on stay with me there we go make it so yeah getting there so now we have a now we have a circle and we have inner circles and let's let's try so what we what we actually want to calculate is this blue circle we have the other circles and we want to calculate the blue circle to actually get the fitness value which is the diameter of this circle um so for this example here if i don't mistake if i'm not mistaken it would be something like this so make it a little bit smaller and like this so and the point is what i was was trying to do is to i wanted to have the maximum width of all the circles and the maximum height so I went through all the circles, the center points of the circles, and I was remembering the minimum x value here, the maximum x value here, the minimum y value here, and the maximum y value here. So now the only way I can fit a, a circle in here is to use a circle with the diameter of the maximum dimension. So that's what I was thinking. So this here is actually, in this case, it's the distance between this x and this x plus one and one. So that's actually what I'm what I'm calculating here. If you look at this, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm getting the min max, min max. I'm 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 I'm, I'm calculating the the width by taking by taking um, if this is let's make it. Make it like this here. If this is our coordinate system, coordinate system, where is my coordinate system? <whistles> Life coding is always fun, I know that. That's why I never do it. Um, come on, give me a layer here. Kite, I don't need you for Photoshop. This is not your turf. So I get my and uh, so this is my my um is there any way you I could put my code yes i could i could put it on paste them but actually i actually need to finish up the stream in approximately 15 minutes to half an hour so um i will i will um upload this or uh, to github or put it on pastebin and put a link in the uh in the description so we are already almost three hours in so thank you very much for staying with me so long that's that's highly appreciated so what i was doing is i i took this center point here had this center point here and with this i i used the max value and subtracted it from uh, and subtracted the min value from it so i got the distance so this is the distance and if i add just a little bit for the circle and just a little bit here for the circle i get the diameter and this is basically the diameter and on the other side we have the height and i choose the max of both width and height max max min min i'm just checking the so this is this is basically what it is 
this is correct. Sorry, it is. It is. I don't see why 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 it shouldn't work. So if this is correct, something else must be wrong. Okay. Um, let's. Um, how about we are using the debugger? And I go and I go and we debug a little bit. Debug main. Yes, your lines are through the center of the circle should be on the parameter. That's correct. But actually, the point here is max x and min x are actually in the center. And in order to get the real width, I'm adding plus 2 onto the width to actually move the lines um, to the parameter. That's the idea of the plus two there. All right, so um, here we go. Uh, best chromosomes, GA population. So let me just check this to make sure we are not running into some other problem. So the console says the best chromosome is 0.36367678. And this is what I have here. 036, that is correct. So I get my coordinates. And my coordinates are coordinates are these this pairs here. Does this are my pairs? for my um, coordinates. And if I print it, it looks like this. And I want to, let me just console, best, best chromosome. So we have, one at 03636 minus 246. 03636, this one, this one, it is, it is the one. So much for circle packing. I should have never visualized that. <laughs> it was so good. I was just like, yeah, it works. And but now I know it does not at some somehow it does not work. And I don't get why it does not work. This actually is not 034. That's this one, right? Yes. And it's at minus two eight. That's correct as well. All of them, they are the right proof. Actually, yeah, the size of the circles is not correct. That's that's totally that's totally true. And I'm not sure why. Maybe 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 my scatter plot is is, is wrong all, all along. Actually, this makes no sense. Normally, the problem is it should look like so. The optimal solution. So that's the problem here. What, what I'm what I'm just struggling with. Um, the optimal solution here is for five 
is this, right? So it should look, look like this. It should, it should form a circle. And it's not, not even close to forming a circle. Ah! I'm an idiot. I forgot one major condition in the fitness function, which is the circles are not allowed to overlap. The circles are not allowed to overlap. Idiot. And the circles are clearly overlapping. I don't know why the why the size of this letter the scatter plot is not working, to be honest, but they are not, they are overlapping. Each of the circles is one in size. They are they are just scrammed together. Yes, they are overlapping. Oof. So we need to, before we even consider measuring the diameter, we need to check if any of these is overlapping with another one. So we, before we go and split our coordinates, that's what we just, that's what we need later. We have to iterate for That's, that's how we do it. For each, for um, circle one in coordinates, just do the for circle two in coordinates. So exactly, Benny. If they overlap, then we just return infinity for the fitness function. Exactly. Mm, is there something? So what do I need? I need I need coordinates and <sighs> this is Where's this one function I need? I don't remember it. Uh, that's not that's not hard. Um, coordinates, coordinates. Um, I just make it the poor man's way right now. Sorry. Before I can. Uh, I need all co I going through the coordinates and I need all the other coordinates. Check with. Ah, I just do it like this. Um, um, index. So for enumerate, I maybe find some better code later if I ever look at it again. Um, enumerate, enumerate coordinates. So here we go. Um, if I1 is not I2, so why is this, this important here? Maybe there's better code for doing this, but this is important because I'm going through the coordinates twice. Of course, if I have two, if I use the same coordinates and check if they are overlapping, of course, the same, the same circle overlaps with itself. We just, we just check for the, 
this is bullshit. This is from programming language. So what we are doing is we're taking the first coordinate and we're having an X and Y uh, vector, basically. And in order to calculate the distance between a vector, you have to um, subtract it's by its components. So you go C1, X, C2, X, plus, and you square this. You have to, uh, uh, how? Two, so you square this, you add, and then you do the same for the second part of the comp, uh, second part of the uh, vector, the y components, you go in here, you go like this. Um, so you, you subtract the y components from each other, like this, and you square them. And then you take the square root of the sum of them. And this is the distance between the two dots in the two-dimensional space. And if the two dots are, if the two circles are overlapping, the distance is smaller than two. I don't care, math. Um, if this is this and this is smaller than two, then return infinity. Uh, yes, exactly. That's what I mean. We have to look at this distance between the two centers, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I what I have done right now. Correct. That's correct. So we went on and subtracted this, we squared this, we added this, we square rooted this, and we checked if this is actually smaller. I just get this away here than two, and if the if it is, then it is um, actually overlapping. And what we do then is we return max float. So I just have to look up where max float is defined right now. Uh, max float Python. I think it was in the math library, but I don't know. Sys, sys. Okay, this is. Ah, oh. let's do this. This is good. Return float infinity. Here we go. Clean this up. And yeah, I don't know. If that's not working, then I don't know. <laughs> then maybe I, I just I just stop for today, get a good night rest, and we'll finish that later. And but let's see. This takes longer, and this is a good sign actually. So this is actually pretty good because now we see it actually tries to form some pattern here. Um, the thing is, we are, I'm not sure if we are learning. <laughs> I'm not sure what's, what's wrong with this uh, relationship between generations and generation total fitness thingy, but this looks unhealthy uh, to say the least. So what I will do now is I will increase the number of generations to, let's say, 100,000. 
and maybe I re reduce the number of circles to three um, to see if maybe we get it with three things correctly. And I look up the correct value for three, which found 0 0.7. So I set my fitness goal to 0 0.7. And I hope that this works and we had the chance, chance to actually get this working. Of course, the letter plot is still a little bit off because the, the size of the circles is wrong, but so be it. So this is rounding now. We are now at 3.94 for best fitness. Maybe the generation size, I don't know what the generation size is right now. 10 is maybe a little bit too little to get, maybe we need some variation here. So the problem is if, if your generation size is too small, you don't get enough variation inside of your genetic algorithm. So now we are in the realm of hyperparameter optimization to get the right um, um, get the right parameters for this to actually work. So let's put a thousand um, a thousand um, specimen in our population and see how this works out for us. Let's go. What is the mutation rate? That's a good question. <laughs> and how is mutated? I don't know. Let's add, ask Daniel that. I don't know what the default values are. Um, now we see that each generation takes a little bit longer than before. Um, three nine. Zero point zero five at which genes and okay, that's good. And what's what's the what's how is it mute, mutated in this case actually? Of course we have floating point values. Maybe we should check the mutation function. Without a proper mutation, we will not get to a result, I guess. Um, let's see what the documentation says. That's the wrong. Mutation, where is it? We have it here, mutation. So the default mutation is random avoid best. That's, how, that's who is mutated. Individual genes is mutated. And how? Oh, let's see. Yeah, we're not we're not really progressing anymore. That's 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 a sign that we are not getting enough <sighs> variance in our um, variance in our evolution. Um, so the question is actually, how does individual genes Individual genes is one type of mutation in the method. It randomly selects genes to randomize according to the given chromosome or gene implementation, which means, ah, okay. So we, we actually, so actually a gene is taken and then the gene implementation is basically run again. Okay, get that. So that's, that's, that's pretty nice. That's a pretty good implementation. So let's, let's put this mutation factor up a little bit.
mutation size, mutation goal. No. What is the factor for the mutation? Mutation rate. Uh, gene mutation rate. Okay. Gene mutation rate. There we go. Why is it an integer? It's not right. Was just wondering. I, I, I thought I, I I saw integer there as a type, but that makes no sense. So just just yeah. Let's try this. I was checking the lights back. They are still running. How many individuals are kept as elite? Could you please get a maximum span of the code? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. There you go. Sorry for that. You know what? While this is running, it just uh, yeah, I w I wouldn't um, judge this uh, too quickly to be honest. Mm. I think that we're just seeing the best fitness. That that's not that doesn't mean that we are actually having. Mm, that we are stuck in, in the sense of we are never getting forward. It's just a matter of time sometimes. Sometimes it's just it just needs a little bit more time to find a breakthrough. So while this is um, working right now, um, I will just go out and do what nature needs me to do after three hours of streaming. Um, and I leave you with this little a uh, genetic algorithm for now, and I will be back in a minute.
Hello again. Oh, I don't need this. Actually, you can hear me without my earpods in. Um, so, yes, maybe maybe it's a good idea what Daniel says. I just uh, put this on pastebin and I give you the code so you can experiment with it yourself. <coughs> pastebin.com. Why not? Let's let's work on this together. Here we go. Um, it's Python code. Public um, circle packing with Easy GA. Here we go. Create a new paste. And there we go. So, Daniel Jack, so it's time to shine for you. Um, here's the code. Have some fun with it. Um, all right. So I think, yes, um, this is where I, um, whenever I write my, my, my genetic algorithm functions myself, it's for me, it's really easy to see what the code is actually doing with all of this framework around it. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's a really good framework. So I have to say that it's, it's fun to work with it's it's easy to use it's well documented with the wiki um so all of this out of the way what i find is that i'm now a little bit struggling to really um uh, uh, in this short time right this has been like i've been exposed to this framework like three hours now um this short time i'm not really able to see all the different possibilities I have now to explore in order to find um, <clears throat> a better solution for this problem now. Um, so that's that's basically what what the problem here is. So it's it's running. So um, but it's not evolving anymore. So we are we hit we definitely hit a, a point here. Mm, where everything is stuck. Maybe we should look at different um, mutation functions or um, selection functions for parents. And I think maybe the number of generations inside of my, uh, the number of the population size is maybe a little bit too high. I don't think I get I get a lot of a lot out of here from this big population size. To be, to be honest. Um, let's let's see. I will, I will stop this here for now. I don't think we're getting anywhere closer here. And I will just reduce the population size to 100. And the next thing I want to do is, mm, mm -hmm, because I want to see how it learns, if it learns. And so what we are printing currently is the generation total fitness. Um, we, I can't, I will also print the generation uh, graph generation there was more what else uh, highest value chromosome and I want to see the lowest as well actually I need the lowest and the highest first anyway it doesn't matter in which <clears throat> So I want to see how big the spread is between um, the best and the worst chromosome 
in order um, in order to see if we are hitting a point where we have no variation anymore, where everything is just one value and basically selecting different parents and switching up the genomes basically just leads us to having more of the same. So that's why I have I add the lowest and the highest value chromosomes right now. And just and just in, in order to get an idea um, where we are heading right now. I mean, I think single point crossover is not very helpful. That's another thing. I think the crossover um, possible uh, thing is another thing uh, is another point that we can get on because uh, we have the problem that we are currently in one point we are basically um, cutting in the middle of the x and y coordinates. So we are basically we have chunks of information, which is we have the first. Um, the first genome, which is two values, and then we have, we have the second genome, which is two values, and so on and so on. And all of this, we, 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 maybe, we maybe cut a point in middle between its chunk of information. That's, that's actually uh, a problem here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm totally with you on that one, Jack. Just put this on here. Um, so... Yes, so that's something I will, will look into next. Uh, let's run this now and see what the graph looks like. And then we will investigate um, new um, ways of ways of crossover thingy. So what did you write? Uh, maybe a, a GA numeric chromosomes would be good for using numerical mutation crossover stuff. GA numeric chromosomes. Is that something that is there? Or is that something that you would think of right now to add to the framework? Um, let me just see what kind of different um, crossover possibilities there are. So we have mutation, we have mutation covered. So I let this run here and we go up. And see, look, uh, populations, parent, parent selection, crossover. Let's see what kind of different crossover functions you guys have implemented for us here. So for everybody who is watching or um, came new to the stream, there have been some new people here. Uh, what we are doing, we are examining uh, EasyGA, a new Python programming package to make writing genetic algorithms way easier. Daniel and Jack are uh, two of the coders that wrote this package. They are both in the chat and are happy to help me to understand this package and to actually get something built here. Um, I see. Okay. Um, so what we are currently trying to do is to solve the circle packing problem um, where we want to pack a number of circles as close as possible so that the enclosing circle gets as small as possible. And yeah, that, that's what we're currently working on. So just to get everybody, everybody on track who might have joined during the last 50 minutes or so. Um, so we have a single point crossover, we have a multi-point crossover, we have a uniform crossover, we have arithmetic, arithmetic average extrapolate random ox one. Interesting. Um, I have to, I have to, I don't know all of them. So, um, So random mate, single point crossovers, one type of crossover. Yes, I know that. So that basically is the, the code for the single point crossover function. And 
This is not helpful as well. So what I would do averaging, maybe, I don't know if averaging is a nice idea, but I, I think the first thing that we have to do is to implement our own uh, crossover function. So I, I just copy this one here, which is the single point crossover function. And what we will do is not the single point, we do a single vector crossover function. So we don't cut in in the middle of the X and Y, but rather between two circles in our chromosome. So that's something I want to do so that we don't um, um, kill our... So what I think I have... A, I, so we don't get anywhere with that. So I kill that and I, re, I will now um, set the duration goal to let's say 300 in order to just see something on the graphs. So this shouldn't take this shouldn't take so long so that we actually now can see something. Um, hopefully it will be plotted somewhere. View windows. Oh, I need the side view. Where's my side view? Uh, tools, side view. That was, here we go. Ah, yes, perfect. So that's pretty cool because now we see that, um, this is actually not, not bad. Um, maybe I did something completely wrong. Maybe, maybe, hmm. we will see. Okay, um, maybe, let me just check something here. Oh, I took the wrong value. <laughs> Enclosing circle diameter is 2154, not 0 0.7. So I would say everything that is around 2.5 would be a good fitness goal to have. Yeah, that's what I just found out, Benny. I was copying exactly. Now the 21554 is the one, exactly. So that was my mistake, I copied the wrong number. So we are not, we are not that bad, actually. We are not that bad. We are getting somewhere. This is, this, this looks quite good. So, uh, so what we are going to do now is to write a new, uh, nope, that's not what I want. I want this one here. Check, wait, we import this, yes. So we call this one single vector. So we get the parent, the parent, the weight, whatever that weight is for, and the star. So yeah, GA. So minimum parent length. Ah, that's basically okay. Minimum parent length. Min land parent land parent two. Um, and we want to go, we don't want to have the parent length, 
but we want the parent length divided by two because we have 10 chromosomes, chromosomes, but just five circles. Um, so what we need to do, we go from we go from zero to four. We get the minimum, we get the right spot, the index in which we want to swap this. And then the swap index must be multiplied by two. And this is our new swap index. And this is basically the single vector crossover function. So, uh, not entirely sure if this is correct, but yeah. So can we just cross over individual implementation? I think that's correct. And then we go single vector and put it in there. And let's see what we get now. Maybe we get a crash because I mixed, I, I messed up the indices. No, it runs. That's good. It's not. It, 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 I think it got better. So we started at four one seven, and we ended up at four oh one. That is that is that is good. Um, let me just close all plots and increase the number of um, generations to 500. And I will decrease the mutation rate a little bit. I think it's a little bit too high. And let's go. So what I think next, mm, okay, we, modi we are modifying everything. So that looks pretty good already. Um, maybe our fitness function. Now I would love to see the correct circle size, to be honest. So our one circle here is at minus 0.5. So its radius goes to 0.5, and it must be like this, right? So like this. The other one here is, goes to 0.5 as well. So this must be pretty close to the other one as well. And this one here goes to 0.25, which is, in fact, pretty close to this one here as well. So th this is not bad. This is not bad. If I get the scatter plot right now, then I should be able to. Um, then if we, I think if we get the, the scatter plot right, maybe we are good and say, yes, this is circle packing. It's not perfect, of course, but it's actually finding some good solutions. Um, so let's, let's try to work on this a little bit more here and see if we can. Um, figure out why the scatter plot is so small i don't i don't get it so that's something that's what's this a big one. let's let's try to do it again with the circles i go matplotlib um, draw circle and see if i can find something that is better So what do we have here? 
for example, we need to loop through the x and y every and k. Okay. Um, I just put it here so we can work on it together. Maybe we we see something. So mm -hmm. this is just data. So they have x and y coordinates as well. So then they do something like this: create a figure, plt subplots equal aspect so circle look circular that is pretty neat so this is something i take and i want to have here so we want an equal aspect ratio so and now loop through so what they do is they go and they don't do this, but they go for chord in coordinates, do this. And it's So let's run this and see how our circles look like. Okay, this is, um, I think there's a circle there. <laughs> I think it's a little bit too big. Maybe one is a good idea. Yeah, actually, the idea of, um, of setting the random seed to, to zero is not, not bad, because this way I would get always the same genomes and would see if, if something else that I change would make it better, but um, I think we are over the stage that we are actually f trying to find um, the right genetic algorithm. I think we have it pretty much nailed down. I think now we are just looking for the right um, um, for the right what what is it called um, hyperparameters, and now we are trying to visualize that. And I think. We are getting closer because I see that this is a circle and there's another one. So um, now it's time for me to actually increase the size of the axes. And to do that, I have I need to find out how this is possible. Ax dot set. There is something like this. Um, Mat plot lib set axis range or something it's called. So, um, <laughs> yes, yeah, that's the problem. So, uh, 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 x set x limit. Ha! So, what we need to do is ax dot set x x lim. And this is between, let's make it minus 10, 10. And the same for y. And maybe now we are seeing some circles.
there we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is our circle packing. This is not so bad, to be honest. This is not so bad. This is actually not so bad. I, I wonder if my diameter um, calculation is wrong rather than, you know, if I think maybe. So the. Sorry for the noise. Somebody is. Doing something here, like whatever. <laughs> so if you heard this noise, I'm sorry for that. Um, so if I go this, so if I if I now um, limit the the set lim x to minimum to the circles, I think I can zoom in more, and then we should see and draw a circle around them. I just I just figured out how to how to draw a circle. This is now you want to have another circle. Yes, we can do that. Yes, of course we can do that. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's see what this looks like if I zoom in a little bit. Where is it? Or was it already that? No, it's still working. There we go. See, like this, this, this is not not bad. This is really not bad. So what we do now is to um, extract some more um, functions from our um, from our fitness function. So what we do need now is to calculate the diameter for our enclosing circle. So for that, we need the min max um, coordinates. I'm thinking right now, sorry. Um, this is um, circle coordinate ranges so we get max max y min so that like this and that's and that's exactly what i what i don't understand maybe the calculation of the fitness is wrong so that's um that's what i was wondering as well we will we will see That's what I was thinking as well. <laughs> Good. So, um, so we have the circle coordinate ranges. Um, maybe I'm a little bit off with the plus two here. So, maybe the diameter they use is different. Um, but let's extract this as well and make a new function. Refactor extract method um, calculate diameter diameter like this. Just put it in here. So we have this, and we need actually we need this to draw as well. So after we have drawn this. We will calculate um, the diameter, and we will also um, we need another another function which is called get center. We need the center of the coordinate of the. Uh, where's my new function? It's all so big. It's such a big font. I don't see anything. Ah better so fitness function calculate diameter here we go and 
and I call this different here. This is I call this um, refactor rename, and this is called now calculate and closing diameter. Yes, do it. I don't care. And this is enclosing center. And we do it like, how do we do it? Um, it's basically, we, we, for the center, we need the diameter, so we calculate, uh, yeah, I do it like this. We calculate the enclosing diameter from um, max x, max y, ah. I mistyped. X, Y, min X, min Y. So this is how we get um, our diameter in this function. And if we... Um, we divide it by two, we get the radius, radius, and the radius, um, if we now we want to return, the y, the x coordinate is min x plus radius, and, mac, and min y plus radius, and this gives us the center point of our enclosing circle. So let's go in and uh, write um, center and draw this as well. So we can see uh, if our enclosing circle is actually correct. If our fitness function is wrong, the circle will be wrong as well. And then we can see if we have a problem. Got that? Perfect. I'm not sure if that works. <laughs> so we get the closing center. We get max x, um, max y, min x, um, min y. Here we go. Um, let's let's add another circle like this and we do it we call this circle here and closing and it gets the center and the size is diameter i think divided by two because the size is the radius but let's see what kite has to say about this so we get x, yeah, radius. So we want color. Color is red. And the fill is, uh, is what is that? Is that a, So fill, fill, fill. I want to see if fill is like like a boolean or if it's a a get fill. What what is the return? Returns whether fill is set. Okay, I, I guess this is a boolean. So I make fill false because I want to have it so that we see the rest. And we are in Python. Python. So add this, add this, show. Let's run it. How large in size is end resulting algorithm to create that circle fitting? I'm not sure what you're asking. What you mean in size? You mean 
like the code or I'm not sure how large in size is end result algorithm to create that circle fitting. It's currently it's 119 lines, if that is what you're asking. So let's put this away and see. Side view. Side view. So we are waiting still for this. And so there's a new plot, right? But no. Ah, I did it. I did an oopsie there. Let's put it again. Let's do it again. That was an oopsie. Let's see what's going on now. So we got another run. Um, I fixed the mistake in line 117. And we are seeing there's something off. But this might be my uh, center calculation. So. Let's see again what we are doing here. Um, min x, min y. Diameter divided by to max x so min x min y Exactly. One, one, one of the centers is in the, I think the, the, the red center is, uh, the red circle is just plain wrong positioned. So that's, that's a problem here. And I'm just trying to figure out why. I think I did I, I did something quite wrong. Let's let's do it differently. I get the diameter. Ah, mm, yeah, of course. Minus one. Minus one. Because um, the problem is that we have this. Um, we are currently taking this. This is our um, minus a minimum x. And this is our minimum y in the center of this ones here. And I was what was taking this coordinate here, and we're adding the radius. But the problem is so this one here. And this is not true because we want this one here and this one, and we want to add the radius. 
So let's um, let's let's try it again. I hope that my, my my explanation makes sense because we we add two on on the on the on the diameter to make it count for the for the parameter of the circles. Should be min x min y, min x min y, isn't it? I'm not sure what you mean. I'm not sure what you mean with that, Benny. Maybe you can elaborate on that one. So that looks better, but still off. This looks better, but it still looks off. So let's do it in Photoshop again. So we have this here. And the point is we are going from here and I'm an idiot. I am an idiot. I am an idiot. Yeah, now I see it. So. Um, this here, if I take the half of the di diameter and put it here, this works, of course, because this here is half of the diameter. But the problem is, if I take the diameter and move it up here, from here, uh, from this point, from min y, it is all slightly off. So like this. This is not... So what I have to do is... This was all a little bit of a bullshit thingy. So what we want to do is basically we have the width and the height. And we want the width and the height. And we need to have maybe <laughs> width and height. I'm not sure if that's correct, by the way. I think, but this is my next educated guess. And yeah. can't stand the suspense anymore. Come on, do something. All right, so that is pretty much in the center, but maybe something is, something is still wrong with our
Ah, mm. Idiot. 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 This is so let's make it like this. Uh, this, ah, sorry, <laughs> this is better. Max minus min, max minus min. We take max and add half of max minus min. We take min and add half of max minus min. So that is, I think, close. But the problem is the diameter. So the chosen diameter is still wrong. And that, I think my, 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 my logic behind the diameter is, is simply, simply flawed. So I think this is so my 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 yes yeah yes 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 I think it's in the middle now the problem is that we have I think my diameter calculation is is flawed the fitness function is is completely flawed and why is that so let's let's go on and and so the solution for one circle is in fact one i think this should work and it does not Ah, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. It's two, of course, because the diameter of a unit circle is two. Yes, stop and rerun. Yeah, but you see, this works. Inst instantly, we get the right, we get the right um, result. And let's see if our circle and our red circle are perfectly aligned. If that's the case, we know that um, it works for one circle, and then we can extrapolate to bump it up to two circles, three circles, five circles. And here we go. So this is this is good. So if we go to two circles, the best way we could do is basically four, because we can just put them as close together as we want. And it doesn't matter in which direction we look. There is no better way than just putting them exactly close to each other. Let's see if our packing algorithm, uh, algorithm with a genetic algorithm actually finds that. So here we here we are going here we are coming into troubles and that's if we fix that then we are good The problem is the problem is Benny was right before I don't actually take the parameter into account correctly I think Because the distance between this point and this point is different than, than this point and this point. 
And that's why my parameter is off. That's why my parameter is off. <laughs> yes, you were right. <laughs> the plus, my plus two hack um, here up here is not working uh, at all. So we need what action? What do we need? What do we need? We need we need I have no idea. I have no idea. This is a mathematical thingy that I have to look up, to be honest. Uh, area, a cloud of circles needs. So can I calculate that? Is there a So the smallest circle problem, yeah, this is this one here. So this is what we're trying to do right now. The smallest circle problem, also known as minimum covering circle problem, bounding circle problem, smallest enclosing circle problem is a mathematical problem. Guess what? Of computing the smallest circle that contains all of a given set of points in the Euclidean space, the corresponding blah, blah, blah. So. Give me, give me some algorithms. Well, these algorithms, there we have. So what, is, what does it do? Finite set of P and R of points in the plane R. Okay, minimal disk enclosing P. If P is empty or R is equal three, then return trivial R. Choose P and P randomly okay i have to read this <laughs> the initial input is a set of set p of points takes one point randomly and recursively finds the minimal circle containing p minus p e all of the other points in p except p if the return circle also encloses P, it is the minimal circle for the whole of the P and is returned. Otherwise, otherwise point P must lie on the boundary of this result circle. It recurses, but is, it is as an additional parameter to set R of kinds. This when P is empty and the solution can be found from the points R for... <laughs> So, but this is, yeah, for points. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is, this is um, not so easy. So I, I guess, I guess it's not hard actually. So, but I am a little bit tired to be honest. It's, four hours now that I was talking constantly and I'm trying to be a little bit entertainment while programming and uh, my brain is a little bit fried right now. So I will, <laughs> I think you're so close to solving this. Yes, I am. I think we have a pretty good, um, we have a pretty good, solution already if i go back to five circles now maybe maybe i find some code i can copy let me just i will i will put this over here so i can do some research 
and we will see what this is doing here. And I will just look if I can have So actually, there is a Python package to um, implement that. <laughs> so I'm just looking into it. And maybe we can use, just use that. I don't have to implement it myself. Not to, tonight. So Uh, yes. So this looks not bad, actually, to be honest. Uh, if you, what is that doing here? Quit, don't need it. Wait, here we go, back. So this is not, not so bad. If you, if you look at it, this is not so bad. The problem is, um, <laughs> yes, it is. It is cheating a little bit, but um, the problem with the algorithm I just found here, with the Weisel's A algorithm, um, is that we are, in fact, it's the wrong. It's 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 the wrong algorithm. So, circle covering circles. I think it's... I don't know, where's my, I need the Wikipedia page for the smallest circle thingy. Do I have it somewhere here? Circle packing, smallest circle is not the one. Because the problem here is that we are, they talking about points, not about other circles. But is that actually, is that actually a problem? No, it's not. OK, we use this Python package. Um, there is actually a package called Miniball. And let's install that. Let's go out here, XX, exit. And pip install Miniball. And Miniball is basically doing this. Exactly, I think it's Velocity Radius plus two actually, because we have um, two half radius on both sides. And that's what I figured out myself right now as well. So Welsi's radius plus one will do the trick. So we have mini ball now. And mini ball, mini ball, mini ball. Let's see how we can use mini ball. Thank you. 
So, mini ball get bounding. And S is a NumPy array. It's working something out here. So, um, so the fitness function, we need to do some circle coordinate ranges is not important anymore. But if we go like this, actually we want, we can do, can do it like here and calculating and closing diameter, meter, diameter, but we need a different um, input. So we need points. And if we have points, then we can use mini ball point get bounding ball from and here we need a two dimensional numpy array of points. So our points come in in the fashion of tuples. So what we can do, don't know if NumPy is actually doing that. We can try, maybe it, it can. So we go this, we import mini ball. And mini ball returns um, C center center and the square root its radius is the square root of R2. Okay, so we need um, SQRT, so here's R2, so that's what, what's coming back, the center and R2. So our diameter is SQRT of R2 times 2, and that's the diameter, and the center is, I guess it's, it's NumPy thingy, but yeah, let's let's find that out in a minute. That is the name diameter. So this is the diameter. And I will rename this, uh, refactor, rename this in calculate in closing circle. And I will return the center and the diameter. And then we don't need this anymore. This will go down the drain. So we now have the calculate and closing diameter, calculate and closing diameter returns multiple things. Um, this is for the fitness function. So I don't need the center. I need the diameter. I get this. Um, I call this here refactor rename. I thought I already changed that circle. Calculate and closing circle. Yes, I want to do that. So, and instead of um, putting in the ranges, which we don't need, we just put in, I guess, the coordinates, which are our points. And I'm not sure if that is going to work. Most likely not. So, diameter, diameter, diameter width is returned, calculate in closing circle, we get the center, we will check that, I will put a um, breakpoint here, coordinate ranges, I don't need this anymore, everywhere where I do need this, there's something wrong, um, so I just put it away, so um, coordinate ranges is stupid, we need the center, like this, we get this enclosing center. We have 
our coordinates we need i think we have them here as well right exactly because we use it up here then we have the center diameter and we put it in and then everything should work so i guess i have some problems up here because i'm not converting um, my coordinates correctly and getting the stuff back so but that's this is something i want to see um so the diameter exactly is well well sees diameter plus two or plus one maybe maybe jack is right we will see i'm currently on the plus two team um run debug main let's see if we get something good out of this So we are in here. Um, we have the list of points. And I, I guess most likely we get an exception that we are. Um, yes. The problem is we are need we need to convert this because the input for get bounding ball, like this one, is an array, an array, an ND array. So we have to create an ND array um, first. And for so we have to convert all of this just a little bit. And I'm navigate back. So let me see. Um, if I get this here, if I have a, a tuple 1.2 and I put it into the list function with a like this, this is not giving me what I want. Um, like this. Ah, so list of tuple gives me a list. So what I need to do is basically Navigate back to my code first. So back to my code. So um, after we got so here we are. So we get the points, and the points are coming in as a list of tuples. So let's convert it to a list of lists with this one here for p in points. And then we will put in np nd array and this should get us the correct this should get us the correct thing what's wrong no nope. thank you what is this problem nothing i guess so i can put this in here and here we go so now we have like this, this. So what we do is we iterate over all our points, getting each tuple out of the, the coordinates. Then we put them, they, we convert them to a list and put this all in a list to put it in a two-dimensional array. It's just NP array. You are totally correct. Thank you very much, Jack. Um, that was my problem. That was the... So, and now if we run this, um, we, if we debug it, we can now see if we get, how we get the center. And that's basically what I'm interested in, how I get this value here and how I can then return it. So let's see. So we get the center as 
a type of ND array. So what I want to do is to put this ND array and I name this center and I do center, center to list or something is it? I don't know, I'm not sure. Center, center diameter and diameter R2, exactly, and diameter, let's go one step further, is 8699, perfect. So I, re I return that, and yes, uh, I think I feel pretty comfortable now. And to ra just run this, I just run this now, run. See, it's not to list. What is it? Come on, kite, help me. To my help. Search. Uh, NP array. What are you saying there? ND array. Yeah, so size. To string, is it just to list or what? Or to array? Just list? Oh, is it? To list without this. Let's go. There we go. Something is happening. So something is working. Um, what am I? So I have uh, 500 generations. It's pretty slow. I think the um, this um, this enclosing circle problem is bigger than I thought. <laughs> we will see. Yes, exactly. The mini ball circle calculation is slow. But this looks pretty nice. This looks pretty nice. And if we if we look at this now and if we are comparing this to what it should look like here this is not so bad. The the only thing that I don't understand is why is my fitness value so high <laughs> why is my fitness value still so high what am i doing what is my fitness value currently diameter just the diameter 
that's the one that I that I actually draw, right? Calculate enclosing circle. Diameter. Plus two. That's what I isn't that what that's what I draw, right? So this is correct. This is basically the diameter. And they they want to tell me that it can actually get smaller than this. I maybe guys, they don't use unit circles. A unit circle is something with a radius of one. They're using with a diameter of one. Oh, man. So, yeah. And your answer is double. Exactly. Here we go. They, my, my unit circle has a diameter of two, not one. So, actually, this here, so if we go this, 2.701. 2.701 times 2 is 0.402. Yeah, we can do that. Let's let's just just just. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can. I actually can. So let's do it like this. Let's run it, and let's see how close we can go. It's all the little stuff, right? The little tiny nuts and bolts, and as soon as you get it, <sighs> it feels so good. Programming is amazing. <laughs> yes, things are falling into place. That's right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the help, by the way, everyone. Jack, Benny, Daniel, um, and thank you, ESM as well so that is pretty nice so here's something wrong because i i actually i didn't i didn't adjust my fitness goal which should should be around 2.71 let's try to hit the 2.71 and here we go Yes. <laughs> so we we get it. We get it. I think so too, yes. <laughs> Maybe I went a little bit overboard with my 2.7. <laughs> but Benny, you're right. I think under under three should be good enough. Look at that. That's good. That's really good. Let's try some something. Let's try a little bit. A couple, couple of more. Yes, that's pretty cool, right? Um, let's let's go and and see how many circles. So twenty circles is five point one two two, but they don't know how to calculate it. It's it's basically it's it's numerical. 
So let's see if we get it to 5.5, OK? Num circles 20, 5.5 is the generation goal. And I give it 2,000 generations. And I let this run for you guys. I will be back in a minute and we'll see how it did. Let's go. Okay, that is that is really really slow. Maybe I went a little bit overboard with my twenty circles, um, but I, I like the idea. Benny said that we should use an an uneven number. Maybe we do fourteen or twelve. Twelve is nice. Twelve is not proved. It's proved to be optimal. OK, so we won't get the optimal value. I, I, I highly doubt that. So we will go for 4.2. How about that? 4.2, 12 circles. Um, and we, I would say we reduce the population size again to about 30, maybe like this. And then we. Um, Start it and see how it goes. Ah, ah no, no, I, I adjusted the fitness goal, 4.2. Okay, so I let, let this run for you guys. Uh, I will be back in a minute.
So how are we doing? Um, one. 1600 generations, 5.2. I don't think we will reach the 4.2, but I will leave this running. Um, I will leave this running uh, through the end and we'll see how it looks like. And But after that, I will actually finish this stream off. And I want to say thank you very much for sticking with me. Some of you have been around for over four hours, and I highly appreciate. I highly appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, this was quite fun, actually. And if you think too, let me know um, in the chat. And yes, I, I think I will try to do another uh, live stream on another Saturday. And yeah, see what we can build then. Maybe maybe we do some neural network stuff next. So <coughs> that's the pattern that we got. Um, it's not as optimal as uh, the ones we got before, but I think we did a quite good job. Um, and Actually, we finished something to we finished to build some something together here, uh, and that is a great achievement. So, thanks guys, thanks for being here. If you want to check out Kite, remember there is a link in the description below. Um, you support my channel, and I can highly recommend it. It's it's a nice tool. It's a nice little toy to have on your side while you are programming. Um, so, yes, uh, DevOps, DevOps Directive, you come in a little bit late, my friend. I'm just about to close off the stream, but I highly appreciate that, that you uh, tune in. Um, so on that note, have a great rest of your weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you in one of my next videos or one of my next live streams. Have a good time and enjoy programming. See you next time, coders.